the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome back to the video. And today we're doing more officers because y'all love officers. And yes, before anybody comments down below, and y'all do this all the time. Yeah, you can see through the bottom of my hat. For whatever reason, these hats I had made that rep the brand. This is actually all my football stuff for my football channel. And yeah, I've got multiple YouTube channels. The bottom are green, so you can see right through them. So yeah, presently you can see Kepler 18 in my head. But I am always thinking about the game. But dumb tis. I'm not even going to put in like a nice little edit mark for that. I'm just going to let it roll because it was that bad. Today we'll be taking a look at Brad Boimler. Now I'm starting with the rare officer first because that's the first one that I've unlocked. Rev Deuce was a dumb dumb and completely forgot to go and finish the <laughs> Ultra Recruit SLB. I could have placed in the top 10, thus giving me Beckett Mariner. But because I didn't, we'll have to focus on Boimler today. But that is it's okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's okay. I do like the Boimler card, but we're going to talk about how he's effective, where he's effective, when he's effective, and if there's anything that you can particularly use him for at level one or if you need him to kind of get leveled up. So... I changed up how we're doing the battle logs today. We are looking at battle logs, but I'm using my Tala. Woo! I've used those in a while. So real quick, let's go over the abilities and go over the levels of the abilities. Unfit to lead. Does not have a captain's maneuver. Yo, yo, do not put this man as a captain. He does nothing. Okay, listen, look at me in the eyeballs right now. He does nothing as a captain. Do not do that. Okay, thank you. Don't come to me like, yo, I'll put him in my bridge. He don't do crap. Yeah, because he's unfit to lead. Now, officer ability, Brad Bormler increases armor piercing, shield piercing, and accuracy by 30%. This is like the opposite of what a Moreau does, but is not as good. And I'll explain why in kind of like a little refresher here in a second, especially for the newer players out there. Then we've got the lower deck ability, Boimler effect, increases armor, shield deflection, and dodge by 45%, which in theory should mean that you get more mitigation if you're not able to do it by yourself or whatever it is that you're trying to fight it is important to note that this ability is everywhere whether it's pvp pve armadas so that actually has some uses so if you get through this video and be like man this tier one guy sucks not necessarily depending on what you're doing now real quick as a refresher let me pull up the pipe moreau and explain the differences because if you just look at boimler's card which is thanks to the power of fcfc.space right there you'll see that Boimler maxes out in his officer ability at 50%, which is not too far off from what Moreau does, even though we're talking about the opposite thing. And then you see the Boimler effect maxes out at 125%, which is actually a pretty nice boost. It's triple, essentially, what we get here at Tier 1. So what does all this mean, and why does it all matter? Well, nothing really matters. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's go take a look at Pike Moreau. The reason Pipe Moreau is so good, even though Moreau's ability is only 60%, is because of the synergizing effect. Drink. So when you have Pike's ability, which is teaching moments, Christopher Pike increases the effectiveness of officer's abilities that trigger and comment by a factor of two times 60, or 1.2 with this synergy. And for those asking why it's displayed like that, it's just being displayed in the way of how the math works. Just do 1.2 as your multiplier. If you don't understand the math, I have a video explaining this math that we can watch later together but that doesn't exist if the synergy's not there so if i were to put brad boimler up here he's not going to get the same level of bonus as if i'm running moreau so if i take moreau down pike then loses the synergy and i'm only giving a you know times two to 20 percent instead of a times two to 60 percent not as good not as good so that is why even as an officer he's probably never going to be a big bridge candidate it is potential that you could use them in certain applications, but then we're talking about having a max rare officer. And because of that, I'm not really going to discuss that heavily in this video, but we can go over that for those players who maybe go and purchase extra shards or whatever to get them unlocked early, to get him maxed early. And then we can kind of talk about where you can go from there in a later video or live stream. So that's the basics. Now let's take a look at some logs. I know y'all love logs. And I really tried to focus for part of this on like lower level battles. And what I mean by that is, let's take an example of this. Klingon Patrol that I'm fighting with Cadet Uhura, Cadet McCoy, Chin. And as you can imagine, underneath is Brad Boimler. Now, I will go ahead and let you know Brad Boimler does not show up in the logs, but you can verify he's working by doing logs while we do these so daggum much. Let's take a look at this first one. This first one, we're going to have 
The Klingon ship is dealing damage to me. Oh no, scary Klingon damage, don't hurt me. So if <laughs> you're gonna have Boimler on this one. Then the second uh, one, I take Boimler off. So the first one, we have 1,030. That's some baby shots, man. I'm so used to the much bigger shots. 1,030 divided by 2,578, which brings us to 39.95%. So in terms of mitigation, we're mitigating right at 40% of what was created. Now, it's not incredible, but it's doable. Keep in mind that I'm definitely punching up on a higher level hostile in this instance. Now, what does that comparison look like when we take Boimler off? Like we just get rid of Brad Boimler. Once again, just to show you the battle log, you can see we've got Uhura, McCoy, Chin showing, but Boimler never shows, but we can verify works by doing math. Now, if we come back to this top log, this is me running the same thing, but taking Chin, or I'm sorry, taking Boimler off of the fight. And what you're gonna find there is we're off 854 damage mitigated at a 252, which turns into 37.9. So we had 2%, a little bit more than 2% greater mitigation with Boimler at tier one, on a Tala versus a Klingon 30 patrol. Is it an immense amount? No, but it does one, prove that he works and shows how he can work. Now, the great thing in this is that as you scale up as a higher level, you're gonna get a little bit better of effect from that. And what I mean by that is, you know, your Tala is a really low level G2 ship. So the stats that it can create are really, really low and the base stats that it have are ridiculously low. So the amount that you're actually able to grow from this is not going to be very much in terms of as a comparison. You see, I've got Brad Boimler off right now because of that log that we just looked at. But what you will find is that if you've already reached your officer bonuses, he can be a nice little addition at the end. So like tier seven ships, let's say uh, an enterprise. Let's say you've got an enterprise or, or a Burrell. Let's pick like a tier seven tier. Eight. Let's say I've got a, let's do a D5. So if we do our D5, well, my defense has already reached 300%. If my attack had reached percentages and I had gotten to where I had that extra slot at the end, remember the only purpose to stack stats, that far right, the only reason to stack stats in this game is if an officer uses them. So if you were using a crew that did not rely on stat stacking, you know, maybe a critical build of Gorkon, you know, Honor Guard, Wharf, and Curla on a Saladin, that doesn't really need any stat stacking. And then you could be using something like a Brad Boimler as an under deck once you've already reached your bonuses once you reach the maximum bonus the only advantage you get after that number is if an officer uses that stat so for example i've got marcus here he uses defense but nobody uses attack so if i had attack at 300 percent there'd be no point in going above that mark unless i you know was using that with another officer which would have been kang let's back out real quick now can you find a way to use him in a different set. It's possible. Here's the tricky part. At tier one, he is not better than the officer bonuses of a ship at tier one. Now, if you level him up, so let's do some rough idea. Remember, we, we talked about his ability as an officer and as a below deck getting better as you level it up. Level one tier one is really not going to have a massive effect unless you're one, you know, on a... Uh, a ship that doesn't have any mitigation uh, properties. And what I mean by that is, if you have got, say, Cadet Uhura, Cadet McCoy, or you're running Next Gen LaForge or Next Gen Crusher, some newer players that don't have that Moreau or Beverly effect as part of their loadout, he can be helpful. Even a few changes in mitigation point can mean the survival of an extra one or two destructions on a whole. So maybe you can finish your dailies a little bit quicker or a few less deaths, but it's not world beating it's not game changing but if you do start leveling him up and you do start getting to that 100 that 125 even 80 percent double then you can actually start seeing it towards a noticeable change and actually okay now i can kind of feel the effect a little bit more and as an officer the stats aren't that bad once again at tier one it's not going to help most players it's become another thing that if you've got your slots full it's better to have a lower decks officer than not have any lower deck officers at all. But from the very get go, he's not that strong out of the box. And that's kind of to be expected. Badgie probably has more effect ready to go immediately. But I am really, really, really going to stress that everything adds up in this game. And what I mean by that is, y'all, comment if you disagree. 
But even if it's Mariner's slight damage buff or it's this slight mitigation change, it adds up. And enough of these combined with everything else that is available in the game can result into a great impact into your game. And what I mean, let's take a look at Badgie. Here's your shield penetration and accuracy boost. This is useful, even if you weren't using it. And if you've got your max bonuses and you're not stat stacking, then throw a lower dex on. You look at uh, Beckett Mariner. People have said, look, 40% is so trash as a bonus. We'll talk about her when we have her. But keep in mind that this mixes in with all the other bonuses. So like the weapons bonuses you get from ship skins or the weapons bonus you get from you know projectile skins, researches that you have. And plus 40 is another nice little boost. And that's a tier one. So at the end of the day, you're not going like on a tier three, you know, Centurion and replacing your lower decks with only lower decks officers. They are secondary, tertiary. They're basically, as their name implies, they're a great added bonus if you need them. But early on, they're not going to change how you play the game and they're not going to make a drastic impact. But they do work, which is important to note, and they can be very, very useful as the game goes on, assuming Scopely properly sources them out. Like this video, the thumbs up button. The good thing is the sourcing should happen every Wednesday because we have the Cerritos. But what we should find is with this Cerritos, Passing out officer shards for level 35 plus. We do need a better sourcing. Scopely, please announce one for lower level players to get these because it's one of the reasons I did the Tala as an example. I think it really can help out lower level players. We need to make sure we can source these out, but you should be able to start maxing these a lot quicker than you would do other officer sets. And that's because every Wednesday you'll have events in the support tab that you can do your Cerritos refinery and pull shards. And I've had really good luck so far of pulling shards from my Cerritos refinery. I'm curious to see what you think and what logs you have run so far on the Cerritos Doritos Taco with this ship or just running the lower deck screw by themselves and what you have found. Personally, so far, after a few days of testing, I like the effect, but it is going to be a negligible increase for a lot of players, while other players will notice a significant increase based on where they're at in the game. They definitely have value, they definitely work, and I encourage you to check them out. Live long and prosper, stay safe for those space cowboys. Deuces, that's me, I'll catch you on the next one. And uh, yeah, we out here again. Pieces. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.